the end of the day, you're the one hanging under your parachute, and I'm the one hanging under mine, and we're all just going to do what makes sense to us. And that's fine. That's fine. Let's all live long and prosper based on our own experience. And hopefully, if we have an experience that is not congruent with our expectations, that we do something about our expectations. <laughs> you know, we change our, our model of the world based on this new information. But not everybody does that. <laughs> you know, science. We need to teach more, teach more science in this world. You know? and, and ego has no place there. That's typically the issue. In everything. In every, I was going to say, this isn't <laughs> just a skydiving. We talk about stock market. <laughs> we talk about COVID. We, you know, you, you have to, it. right? You, you just have to step out of you know, the ego's playground and you just get, well, what data do I have? You know, and and at the same time, that that data is is only part of what comes in because we can't measure everything, right? We, we can't test everything. There's a lot of parachute malfunctions that it would be immoral to the test pilot to do the test. <laughs> so we can't possibly know. You know what I mean? Are you going to get infected by getting stabbed by a fork that was, you know what I mean? Don't. <laughs> so therefore, we're going to have unknowns, right? Within just, I mean, just take our little microcosm of the skydiving world. We have the unknowns that we have to learn to live with. And trust that there is some other form of guidance beyond science that these gut sensations whether we're discerning who we're listening to or we're discerning what gear to jump or which you know method to use it you got to be able to trust this you know you got to be you got to believe that there is a a uh, silent voice i guess you could call that that says don't get on that plane you know don't don't jump that parachute. Don't jump with that guy. <laughs> you just keep listening to it. Don't make this jump at all. You know, and ride the plane down. There's something built into our culture that is showing up that that is being revealed to you through these conversations, where people get their dander up about a new guy asking too many questions or voicing Ooh. too many opinions. What's inherent in our sport? Where does this uh, resistance come from? Why are skydivers so freaking insecure that they're not open-minded? That's really the trap that we have to look out for. Um, and just not don't be that, <laughs> you know, recognizing always that, um, that the information that, that comes in to save your life can come from places you didn't expect and people you didn't expect it from. So it's there. And you didn't invent it. You simply provoked that that insecurity that's that's inherent in the sport. Um, yeah, so it's not it's not all about number of jumps. No, no, not at all. Yeah, and and a lot of the things are. Um, somebody says, "Well, this can be done," and the person is saying, "Yes, but not for me yet." You got to be able to honor that. You know. Oh, totally. Yeah. And, and sometimes you, you, you can find yourself pushing somebody into something that, that scares them too much and they'll cause a problem. It wasn't an empirical thing, but it became an empirical thing because their subjectivity creates the empiricism. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it is also um, a conversation that just hasn't happened yet, you know. A lot of the opinions that we have that are actually steering us to towards being wrong, you know, what I mean? it's like sort of, a, I don't know yet exactly, but this is my belief structure. It's just untested. Somebody, you didn't get, get hit with all the logic, all the information yet. And so your belief is, uh, you know, the world is flat. <laughs> you know, that makes sense based on the data. I keep walking and it seems like it's flat to me. <laughs> I go up in an airplane, the horizon still looks pretty flat, must be flat. Yeah, new, ugh, scary. Never not be afraid. You ever see that movie? It's very helpful. The uh, the Croods, Avery's probably seen it, you've got kids, right? The, the, yes. the, the Croods.
Grid's movie, the, the fundamental belief structure of these cave people and the leader, the, you know, the, the father is like, never not be afraid. You know, everything new. Oh, it's a new thing. Kill it, kill it, kill it. <laughs> it it's, it's not just within skydiving. It's within the human mind. You know, I mean, there may even be genetic basis for our mind to have aversion to novelty, whether it's new foods or new experiences, new people. You know, so if, if that's if that is built in there and we also have the uh, assertion that novel is going to bring in the possibilities of improvement, you know, whether it's gear or technique or anything else. Well, then clearly fear isn't serving us, <laughs> you know, that sort of blanket when in doubt of, of weighed novelty, that's not serving us. But at the same time, we have to recognize that it's just going to keep coming up as we move forward into what we need to do, that we're going to be afraid as we move into these places of, of, of mm -hmm. increased risk and increased learning. And you just go, I, I, I can live with being, being afraid doesn't kill me. <laughs> I can live with being a little bit scared. Uh, as a matter of fact, I don't feel like I'm living unless I'm a little bit scared. <laughs> a little. <laughs> but not terrified. Not 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 chainsaw masker movie. <laughs> <laughs> not my thing. I was scared watching that airplane circle up and away and disappear on me. You should have seen it. This poor little plane. It's a Cessna. Looks like a little 182. It's got two props. And it's just power on, power off, right and left. And that's just about differential thrust, right? Mm -hmm. So the airplane turns based, based on the, the speed that the, the propellers are spinning. Very simple. Matthew is like constantly like he'll fly it past himself and around himself and around. He's so good. But the winds will gust it up to like 30 something miles an hour. And I'm right next to the stadium and the winds, you know, sort of coming bl blasting up, uh, you know, off the stadium and deflecting upwards. Um, and when I realized that I couldn't penetrate into the wind and, I, you know, and now it's getting further away and it's not not responding to my controls and it's getting further and further. And all the kids, all I was with like eight kids, they with their bicycle and they all take off and they're trying to follow it. I see it. I see it. It's over here. And it's just receding into the distance. I was scared. <laughs> oh, so, uh, live and learn. Live and learn. Don't fly RC planes when it's windy. Got Same it. rule. Same rule as skydiving. Yeah, and it's it is. It's like that helpless zone where you realize that it's just the conditions are are not conducive to my skill being able to save me. Because I'm a damn good pilot with that thing. You know, in a parachute too. And when I was facing into the wind, going backwards down the mountain, what was it uh, in the Adirondacks to land at the base lodge? I'm backing up down the mountain because the wind is that strong going downhill on the ski slopes. Skiers, you know, skiing down. I'm like, <laughs> scared out of my mind. It was my own damn fault for getting out of that plane. Right? So the, 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 the trick with the sport in the long term is to, to, listen to your you know what i mean your spidey senses and just don't get in the plane when it doesn't feel right you know don't take the advice from the person when it doesn't feel right don't jump that gear if it doesn't feel right because you don't get hurt by jumps you don't do <laughs> <laughs> yeah you just got to figure out how much you can flex the muscle of your skill you know and how you can use your your judgment and your abilities to understand to turn that risk into something that's just an unlikely possibility, something you can't ignore, you can't pretend it doesn't exist, and yet it's not going to happen because you're a badass. <laughs> That's the secret to skydiving. You just got to be a badass, be good at it, uh, and and so so good in your judgment that you don't put yourself in those situations where your badass skills are not enough. Born to be brilliant. We are not born to be boring, to be mundane, and we're not born to toe the line of safety so much that we don't live.